Welcome back to Oh My Pod, the podcast that teaches you how to automate and grow your podcast. My name, as always, is Justin J. Moore. I help coaches and experts launch podcasts that only take them one hour a week to manage and also help them grow their businesses. And today was an interview with a really good friend of mine who I've known for about a year now. He's my coach. He's my mentor. I help him with his podcast while we're launching it right now. And so we're kind of partnered up on stuff. His name is Madhu Daza. He was a monk for five years, and then he spent a few years helping people with their health, kind of coaching people one-on-one, but he wasn't really making a whole lot of money doing that, and he was kind of just grinding, grinding, and couldn't get ahead and couldn't really take care of himself properly. So then he decided to shift towards helping people who help people themselves. And his whole thing is about teaching people how to monetize their life's purpose. So doing stuff that's incredibly meaningful to you and helps people, but also to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and growing your own income and your own wealth so that you can help more people and have a bigger impact. So really, really cool thing that he does. And one of the ways that he's grown his business from literally negative to seven figures and beyond is through podcast guesting. He's done a whole bunch of podcast guest appearances on a bunch of big podcasts. He thinks that he's made somewhere around 100000 to $200,000 just from guesting. And now he's starting his own podcast. And so this whole episode was all about how he does podcast guesting, how he finds shows to go on, the pitches that he uses when he reaches out to a show. He actually uses Podmatch to get onto podcasts. And he talks about that process, how he listens to a clip of the show and then does a personal outreach and how he even has a video that he sends to people to kind of allow them to get to know him a little bit. And I think what really sets Madhu apart from other podcast guesting people, people who try to get on a podcast as guests, is that he has such an incredible story that allows him to get onto podcasts way easier. And what I would bet is that you have an incredible story too, that you just don't really know how to articulate totally, or you're not willing to articulate. But what we talk about in this episode is how to take charge of your story and use it to help you get on to podcasts as a guest. And on top of that, we talk a little about Madhu and how he's starting his own podcast now. A whole bunch of other stuff. It's a great episode. It's really fun, really laid back. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you want to get more help from us or you want to find a whole bunch of resources that you can use to grow and automate your podcast, we give away a whole bunch of stuff that we probably shouldn't be giving away for free, but we do because we just want to get people inside of our community. We have a free community on school, completely free, really easy to join. And in there is a whole bunch of our resources completely for free. And there's trainings, there's lessons on how to do your podcast intro, how to grow your podcast, a whole bunch of great stuff. And the link for that will be down below. So that's everything. Let me get right into the episode. Okay, welcome back to All My Pod. Today is a super special guest, as I mentioned in the intro. Madhu is a really a close friend of mine that I've known for a long time who has some amazing content out there. And that's why I was so excited to bring him on here. So first of all, man, how's it going? Oh, I'm so grateful to be here with you, Justin. And yeah, it's true. We are friends. And uh, for better, for worse, we, we, we have a lot of fun together. But I'm more excited to talk with you, not just because we're friends, but because of the really interesting and fascinating topics that we'll be exploring today. Totally, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got, you've got experience in the podcasting game from the guesting side and soon to be from the hosting side as well, which we'll definitely touch on because I think you're the perfect example of when is the right time to start a podcast. And one thing that I think is that a lot of people start way too early. But yeah, so we will definitely kind of play around in the podcast guesting space because I mean, like you've had ridiculous success there, which I think everybody can learn from. And we'll get into that. But first of all, I honestly like I tell your story to people when I talk about like the type of client that we want to work with. Because like, you have the story that is like the perfect fit for the type of people that we want to work with. And so I feel like I've told your story enough. Why don't you just briefly like go over what you were doing and what you're doing now and the business that you've grown, the story that it took to get there. Stage is yours. Sure. I'll give you the short version and we can expand it from there. So uh, long story short, when I was 18 years old, I shaved my head and moved to India to become a monk and lived in the monastery for about five years. No possessions. We had two robes, which was literally just non-stitched cloth, orange robes that were just 
long sheets of fabric pretty much that you wrap in a particular way to make a robe with and pretty much living out of a backpack as much as you could fit there and uh, for about five years did that and from after graduating the monastery and becoming a quote-unquote normal person if that's what you want to call me anyway I don't think anyone will actually call me the word normal but integrating into society I spent a few years just suffering financially while helping a lot of people in holistic health and mindset meditation, yoga, et cetera, all the things that I had learned being a monk. And I was doing it at my own expense. And I was making practically no money doing that, uh, even though I was really helping people. I wasn't helping myself much. And then I spent some time actually studying finance and money and sales and marketing and creating first a six-figure business and then first year, and then we doubled that the next year, and then we doubled that the third year. And like that, we kept expanding up into uh, pretty much the seven-figure business we have today. And a few years ago, I went from helping people with their holistic health and meditation exclusively, but now helping more other healers, experts in the health and wellness space also create their own businesses in a sustainable, non-slimy way, in a way that's actually monetizing their purpose. Which sustainably means not in a way that's frying people out and actually retain your clients and work with people for long periods of time, get them sustainable results, et cetera, uh, which I see far too much of the opposite of bro marketing when it comes to uh, marketing online nowadays of trying to just get people in and make them sign contracts to pay a lot more money than they probably should and all that jazz. So anyway, that's that's a, the shorthand version of what we do now. Totally. Yeah. I think I think what I usually describe what your business does to other people is that monetize your purpose. So it's like there's something that you are uniquely good at and called to do. And I think like what you said, like people fall into a cycle where they're just constantly grinding and and feeling guilty about ever feeling guilty even about the idea of charging more to the point where they could they could they could expand how many people they could help and and expand their impact like crazy if they would just take a bit more for themselves along the way so that they were able to actually create something sustainable so 100% I love that and part of what I want to do and what I always do on this podcast is I know that I could interview you on my personal podcast, if I had one about, you know, wait, dive really deep into that whole process. But what I love about what I do on this show is I'm always bringing things back to podcasting so that whoever's listening, they're here because they want to grow or improve or automate or whatever their podcast. And I hate the idea of blindsiding people with something off topic from podcasting. That's my personal belief about podcasting. So what, what, we, what we can totally do is I want to focus in on how you used content to because something that you said in there like you, you took a business from like zero not zero but close to you know very small amount to to yeah okay so negative zero to seven figures i know you have a pretty awesome team as well but i want you to talk about how content was a big part of that and what role podcast guesting played in taking that business to that next level and that's just, your, you got the stage. You can just totally riff on that. Yeah, there's a saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And uh, a lot of the success that we've had, and when I define success in this particular context, I'll say that being in the eyes and ears of many different people, many of which then want to reciprocate with the value that we offer, has been through content more than anything. And usually when we say content, it's exclusive to people referring to social media and in my case, that was a lot, but there was other different types of platforms and various types of in-person content. In other words, consolidated ways of presenting information in, in accessible and palatable packaging, which is ultimately all that podcasting is, is a well-consolidated, accessible form to present information and content in a way that the listener or the viewer and or both can consume it and take it into their life. And I mean, we built our first two years of you know several hundred thousand dollars exclusively off of just content, making valuable content that people then, hey, I like this, this stuff works. And from there, getting in enough conversations with enough people that some people say, hey, could I give you a little bit of money? I'm like, all right, fine. And, and that's just from content itself. What to speak of, uh, I feel grateful that I've been on some substantial podcasts with you know hundreds of thousands of listeners and downloads. What are a couple of them? I just, I know people are going to want to know and I want to know. Yeah. What have been your favorites? Some of my favorites. Oh, that's, that's not fair. No, 
there's a handful that I've been on, not necessarily even the bigger ones that have been my favorites, but uh, may, maybe better, but better I can give you a list because there's, I've probably been on, I don't know, 50 plus or whatever the case might be. And I, I'd feel dissatisfied to play favorites <laughs> on this. But here's what I will say. How about how about some of the bigger bigger like name ones like one one or two that people might like be like oh yeah I know that show yeah some of the ones that I've been on that are bigger that I would encourage others listening to we have the wisdom of the sages is a great one that that was one of the ones that I was on relatively early on even just host starting my business and whatnot and that's one that we've gotten to have a lot of great conversations from there's ones from the Bhakti for Thinkers. There's ones from Modern Yogi. I, I, I mean, I can make, I could say a lot of names, but there's a lot of really wonderful podcasts out there. Some of the ones, I would say my favorite one is called Sound Bhakti. That's B-H-A-K-T-I, Sound Bhakti. Probably one of my favorites. Cool, love it. But anyways, what was, what was my first part of that? Yeah, talking about content. Really what I'll say is, in, in short, is that if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. And all you have to do to provide quality content, which is really all that podcasting is, is record yourself talking about things that you love talking about that can improve the quality of life of other individuals. And so my shtick, my opinion is that if you have something good, you can't just, you can't hide it. You can't gatekeep it. It's your obligation to try to share it with others because if it's helped you in any way, then it's very likely it could help someone else. And so you're obliged by having the burden of that knowledge to have to share it with others. And podcasting is just, there's no comparable platform other than podcasting in the world to really present messages in consolidated yet accessible formats for both an audio and visual audience. I mean, it's really like the modern day television. Uh, One might make that argument. And so podcasting has not only helped me in terms of my growing my business in terms of getting our message out of changing people's lives. But as you mentioned, now starting our own podcast, I'm seeing just how transformative it can be for helping impact other people's lives. It's all, all it takes is one cool thing that somebody hears that they then take into their life, into their mind, uh, that can change them. And that's a success. If you can just touch one person, that's a success. What to speak of a hundred, what to speak of a thousand, what to speak of 10,000, a million, et cetera. And that's what can be attainable via podcasting. Yeah, yeah, I love it, man. And so on podcast guesting, because podcast guesting is wildly misunderstood, there's what people don't realize is that there's about 30 people looking to go on to podcasts as a guest for every one podcast that exists. So there's a huge amount of saturation. And what I think is missing from most people when they are thinking about going on a podcast is that they're they're thinking about it in a in a way where I can get access to somebody else's audience without doing the work of building that audience. And all these people are gonna, you know, wanna buy my stuff or something like that. And then there's even another level of people who who are coming on with very clear intentions and and they're their or pure intentions. They want to serve the audience. They want to create great content. Awesome. But then there's a, there's like the next level, which is somebody who has that sort of like fame quality. Like it's like their story is like something that is so unique. And so I don't want to say click, like click worthy, but it's so like, it's just, it's, it's a thing in and of itself. And I think that's what separates you because you have this background you have an, you have the story. You have such a great story. So when you were reaching out to podcasts to get onto as a guest, because this has been something that you've you've done a lot of. Like I wonder, I wonder like if I could do like a two part question. Like the first would be, what if you were able to give like any kind of specifics? What do you think podcast guesting has done for your business in terms of like clients or in terms of like just like you know getting in front of people or something like that? And the second thing would be what strategy were you even using to get onto these shows? Like, was it you reaching out? Do you have a pitch thing? Like, what was the logistics of that? Yeah. Well, first talking about how it's impacted us. Uh, from a purpose perspective, it's been nothing but success because, you know, we've, I've gotten to share the teachings that have really transformed my life and uh, uh, my life. And I'm just so grateful for my teachers for presenting this information to me in such an accessible way that all I want to do is share it. So from that standpoint, full success in all ways. From a monetizing perspective, it's also, I mean, I, 
I've, I for sure brought a minimum of one, maybe $200,000 in just from particular podcasts that I've been on. So wait, let me ask one thing there, like, cause I know that this is something that I'm actually really curious about. So like, did you, when you went onto these shows, were, were you like, was your call to action? This is a very logistic question, but I know people want it. Was your call to action like, Hey, here's my, like, did you, did you give them a, a link for, for them to book a call with you? Or did you deliver a lead magnet that then brought in calls? Like what was the actual like cold, hard logistics there? It was always some form of a lead magnet. And uh, oftentimes that would be straight to our community, unless there's a very relevant lead magnet or piece of content that would be uniquely helpful for that listener. We would just send people to our community and then from there get in conversation. And I rarely go straight to the book a call just because we or a little bit busy anyway. And we like, we have a kind of big pre-qualification. And, and so either way, we'd want somebody to have an experience with us to even see if they'd want to learn from us because we just sell implementation. We, we give all of our content for free and we just help people with the implementation process. And so- Love that, by the way. I think that's, for anybody listening, that is such a cool way to, to do it. And we'll plug your community below 100% so people can see what you're doing there. That's kind of you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and we, we are a big fan of just given as much away as possible. And again, because I'm grateful because my teachers did that for me. And so um, as far as success, I would say on all metrics, being a guest on podcast have been successful, whichever way you look at it, from a satisfaction standpoint and happiness standpoint, from a monetary standpoint, from a audience building standpoint, et cetera, whatever metric I would say in all ways it's been lifted. As far as how we got on, it was somewhat out of my scope of awareness for a while to reach out to podcasts. And somehow or other, I just had friends that were doing it and I was at the right place at the right time in the beginning. And then I got a taste for it. I was like, wow, this stuff really works. And unbeknownst to me, there is a whole ocean of listeners that really want transformational practices and techniques. And if you got, if there's something you like, you could be damn sure there's a lot of other people that like that thing no matter how niche it might be. Great way to put it. Yeah. (laughs) And so podcasting, I realized it was an unparalleled way to really share helpful information with others. So that's when we join different uh, services that connect guests to listeners. And yeah, we have a really straight pitch with uh, where my team, they find podcasts that are in our niche and either through health and wellness and mindset, which is again, what I was practicing for many years prior to doing business or now in the more business realm. And it's like, Hey, listen, this is a briefing of the story going from less than poverty. Cause I actually, uh, when I, gra- after graduating the monastery, I, there was things that I was hit with. I, I fortunately got an autoimmune disease that I then had to find out how to afford all the things that would keep me alive <laughs> and not be bedridden. So I actually, yeah, I, I, I went under. And so I, you know, I went from ne- being negative to, yeah, somehow or other building what we built today. And, you know, being a monk and we have what's called the monk mindset method where we teach people actually how to take control of their life by being in control of their mind. And there's a whole approach around that, the conscious closing systems, how to sell without being salesy, et cetera. It's like one of the single best approaches I've ever encountered, by the way. I don't know for anybody listening, I should have probably mentioned this, but Madhu and I, we kind of partnered up. I, I'm helping Madhu get a podcast together, which is going to be the coolest show ever. Like, you know, we can do another episode when you launch it and we can talk about what your experience was launching the show and the first few things. We could totally get into that. But, and Madhu is, we're, we're working together. Like I, he's, he's one of my coaches and uh, I believe in coaches. Gosh, I, I really believe in coaches. It's like one of the biggest factors of any success that I've had and, and will have for sure. And so I definitely, I'm part of his program and, and it's it's fantastic. So I guess that was a, li- a little plug, but I had to share that. So anyways, cont- continue. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that. And you know, it's, it's working so well because you work so well, because you have the right mood, the right mindset, and you really provide incredible amounts of value to people. So that's why somehow or other we're able to help. Thank you. As far as the approach goes, I would say we just make a very clear value proposition. Like, hey, listen, this is what we've done. I don't have all the answers, but I've helped myself a little bit and I've been able to help some others. And if this would be relevant for you, let's do it. And, you know, I, I'm a big believer of you just do something amazing. And if you don't think you've done something amazing, you're probably lying to yourself. But even if it's true and you haven't done something amazing, then just go do something amazing. It doesn't take much effort. Something amazing means go provide value, go change someone's life, go touch one person's 
life. That's all it takes. And then just take what you've done and share it with others. And not in a way of, oh, I have all the answers. You, this is the way you have to do it. I'm so repulsed when people tell me, oh, you have to do things this way. And I'm just so anti this, that. It's a black and white. And so it's like whenever somebody says you have to do this, that, I immediately go, I'm not doing either just because of how rebellious I am. And so what I mean is you find one way that you've improved your quality of life and you present it as a way, hey, this is what's worked for me instead of, hey, this is how you have to do it. And I found an incredible amount of positive feedback from that in terms of people go, hey, that was so real and genuine. And I can tell you're not trying to sell me anything here. Even if you do have things for sale, it, there's, there's a sense of like, yeah, I'm good. I'm taken care of. And you got enough clients. If you want to join, you're welcome to, but better just let me help. And you help enough people, enough of them want to reciprocate in the form of working with you. And especially in my case, getting the implementation and not having to figure out themselves because I couldn't agree any more with your point of get good teachers. You want to be good at something, find somebody who's great at it. And then so it's just through the process of osmosis, which is speak of education, you, you can actually become phenomenal at that thing. So I'm a big believer in that. And anyway, I could say, I could speak for hours on the benefit of mentors and coaching and all that. But in short, I couldn't agree anymore. Yeah. Honestly, one thing that you said there too, about rather than, rather than claiming that you have the answer that is going to be the definitive answer or a definitive answer. When you speak from experience and you actually have an experience, then you're sort of indestructible when it comes to, you know, if, if, if people are, I don't want to put that in a way where it's like being defensive, but it's like you, nobody can argue if it worked for you and if you're helping other people with it. But so it's a way that you can be more relaxed in the type of things that you're sharing because you have that that cushion of like, I'm not telling people what to do. I'm just sharing what worked for me in hopes that it'll work for somebody else. And since, you know, of course we're all unique, but in a lot of ways we're not at all. And something that works for you is going to work for a whole bunch of other people too. So, and, and I think that's actually a really cool thing that I was thinking like when you're doing a podcast also, when you're on, when you're being on a podcast or when you're doing your own podcast, coming from the perspective of not giving definitive answers, but speaking from just sharing your story, sharing what's going on with you, like that is the best part about having a podcast is that is the place to be able to just share like what's working for you and the things that you're trying out. And, and so that was, that was something that I picked up in there that I think is, is really cool. But also on the like logistics side, so you said that you actually worked with a company or a couple of companies that helped you line up guests, interviews and stuff. Was that like, was that worth it? Did that work? Because I've heard mixed opinions about that stuff. Yes. The short answer is yes, it worked. It was really helpful. Um, I mean, honestly, there's only one we've actually used. I think we signed up for a few, but then I, I can be quite lazy and for better, for worse. And it, it helps because I don't work a lot, but uh, it doesn't always help in terms of, hey, anyway, doing as much as possible. So I know we picked one uh, platform, which is called, is it Podmatch? Podmatch. Thank you. It is Podmatch. Yeah, yeah, Podmatch. Oh, Okay, just briefly before we go on in that, I had the founder on a few episodes ago. I have been promote like I I believe in this platform like crazy. So it's that's crazy that you said. It. So it's Podmatch that you've been using. Yeah, I really like Podmatch because uh, what we've done with it is my manager now reaches out to a few podcasts that seem like they might be a good fit for what we're looking for, and we're very particular. I will say it's, we don't reach out to everyone, but it, it's someone that we resonate with. And then I will at least listen to a clip of each of those and anything that I'm like, oh yes, I, I, I like this mood. I like this presentation. Then what we do is we send a draft out to, and we also mention like why we are reaching out to them. That's like the yeah, customizable so you personalize thing. it to their show. Every single one. Every single okay, one. Okay. Cause I get stuff on Podmatch all the time that is clearly not personalized and it's just delete, delete, delete. So that's a, that's a unlock right there. So personalize it, obviously. Personalize every single one because, I mean, all it takes is, again, one podcast to change the trajectory of someone's life. And so we personalize it. We say, hey, the reason we like it, and, and I'll tell them, I'll say, hey, these say this, that, the other, whatever the case might be. And then I, somehow or other, I, I feel blessed that we've practically only get yeses, probably because we are so particular of who we reach out to and then we personalize it. And so I potentially we've got some no's, but those that we do list, uh, reach out to, we book. And from there, 
it's just a matter of providing value. And I try to do that ahead of time. And I, I have a personalized video I send to people. It's like, hey, just want to let you know, this is this is who I, I it's pre-recorded. Actually, when I, I shouldn't say it's personalized, excuse me. It's it's just a loom video of me saying, hey, listen, this is, I uh, just want to introduce myself a little bit more. This is what I do. This is what I like to talk. These are a couple of topics we can explore, but really I'm only here to serve you and your community. If something happens where they come to me, I won't argue, but my only intention is just to try to provide value on your platform because, and I'll say things like, I'm particular about who I introduce to my crowd. So I'm grateful that you're willing to let us introduce to your crowd. And, and I'll present things like that. And I, I really believe in the art of connection. And that's, there's nothing more important in our life than connecting with other individuals that we actually want relationships with. And that's why no one would take a billion dollars and the house of their dreams, but to be isolated. It's like if I said, you can have everything you want, but you'd be alone forever. No one's taking that deal because connection is key. There's nothing more important to it. And so therefore, taking the time to actually make quality connections is arguably the most, the best use of our time. Yeah. Okay. So let me go back and summarize all that in with a couple of things that I picked up. I love to do that. It helps me learn. I think people who listen like it. I like when people do it. So like number one, and then there's also something that I want to add in there because you, so you're personalizing messages, you're using Podmatch, awesome. You have your manager or for somebody else, it could be an assistant doing some of the administrative stuff. And, but you are listening to every show and actually making sure that it's aligned. And then you've got this video that goes along to introduce people. Now I have a video that people watch when they book on my podcast and it does the same thing. It introduces me I think if you're going to do a video podcast interview, the first time that you talk to this person should not be the first time they ever really see you in your face and speaking to them. So I, I'm 100% on board with that. But you also said that you don't, you've gotten a lot of yeses and you don't totally know why because maybe you're just reaching out to the right people. I think yes, yes. And you have your story dialed. And this is what, it, like if you come, I mean, if you show up in somebody's inbox and they actually, re like, the only way that they would say no is, I feel like, is if, if they didn't read what you wrote. But if they read it, and they go to your, you know, your your past interviews, and they, they read your story, and they learn a little bit about you, it's like, who's going to say no to that? Like, really, I mean, the story is so dialed. It is such, you could literally just write, like, from monk to seven-figure business in the title of the episode. Like, you already know what the title is going to be. You're literally serving, serving them on a silver platter, an amazing, valuable impactful episode. And I think for a lot of people listening, what's missing in the podcast guesting thing that you're trying to do is that you don't have a good enough story to actually get onto these shows or be desirable to be on these shows. Because you, if you flip the script, would you interview yourself with the way that you're presenting yourself? And I think what's, what's interesting is like, if you don't, like you said before, if you don't have the story yet, it's time to go, to go make that story and maybe stop focusing on trying to get onto podcasts before you have that story. Or what I, and what I find with a lot of people is they have it already, but they have not figured out how to like profit off of it or prioritize it or bring it to light in a way that f fiddles in with their business. Like for me, I do music and I have a lot of songwriting credits and streams and I have more and more been leaning into that and weaving that story into my business. So if I go into a podcast, I might talk about music and sovereignty credits and then bring podcasting into it as well. And I've, so I think that that's, that's what I garnered from everything that you just, you just said there. I feel like that's accurate. Yeah. And I, I you think you express that quite eloquently and really everyone does has a special story and it's just a matter of bringing it out and acknowledging it. Oftentimes it just comes to our own limiting beliefs about ourselves. But, you know, going to the point we were sharing earlier that you alluded to there is that if we're just honest and we just share the things that have worked for us, then you can't have imposter syndrome because you're just talking. You know, the imposter, exactly. Imposter syndrome only happens when you're pretending to be something you're not or have all the answers or whatever the case might be. And so you simply just look at your life, look at any area that you've improved and just talk about that and in a way is to try to make it accessible for others to also do that. And then that's there. And then you just got a critical story because even in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I was just like a monk for a couple of years, like whatever. I, yeah, I mean, I guess I have this business I'm grateful for. But like, you know, but then, you know, when it's reflected back to somebody who cares about me, like when you say it, I'm like, oh, wow, that does sound really good. And, and over the years, just continue refining that. And so I offer that as if somebody hears my story, your story, they go, wow, yeah, but they're special. 
Sure, Justin is special. Not I. Maybe, maybe in some ways, but so are you. If we are special, so are you. It's just a matter of being honest with yourself and taking, don't harbor and hoard those great things that you've learned and just share them with one person, two people, five, 10, 100, whatever you can, just share them in a free way and then watch the magic happen. Really just va- provide value first. And then before you know it, there'll be too many podcasts reaching out to you. Yeah, totally. Like once the story's dialed and the and you know your business is, is growing and all these things are happening, like podcast guesting also is going to happen organically. Like people are going to want to get you on their podcast because you have that story. You know, they like, oh, I, I got to get this guy on so I can ask him this question. Like, you know, and that's a, that's a whole different experience. But yeah, so I think also, of course, Podmatch, when you take it seriously, when you really put your heart and soul into something like that, it will pay it will pay off in, in, in dividends. I have another person coming on actually in a couple of weeks who lined up 50 interviews on Podmatch within two months for a new course that they were launching and had a huge amount of success with it. So we're talking a lot about it. I think it's one of the best platforms in the entire industry. But moving on a little bit and just kind of like, you know, starting to kind of wrap things up, I do want to just talk about you now starting your own podcast. And the main thing that I want to hear from you is like, you've been doing the guesting for so long. So why didn't you start a show before and why are you doing it now? Yeah, so with some of the personal reasons is number one, I wanted to become first an excellent learner and recipient of podcasting. So being a guest for the last, probably my first podcast six-ish years ago, my goal, I mean, the last two to two and a half years, is, uh, I've done the substantial amount of the podcast, don't get me wrong, but from the time I started, really what I want to do with everything in my life is try to become a good learner first, and then you could become a good teacher. So what I've done is, you know, being on, say, whatever 50 plus podcasts that we've been on is learning like, what do I like? What don't I like about the leading side, about the sharing side? What type of uh, questioning do I like? What type of moods? What types of introduct? I mean, and really just observing. And so I found that to be exceptionally helpful. And so now I have a pretty good idea. I'm like, yeah, I, I know I like this style. I know I don't like this style, whatever it might be. And so that's number one. It's just for my own personal kind of edification. From there, the the second reason is I'm a big fan of doing it right. And you have, I mean, I'm so impressed with what you've created in terms of making a simple streamlined approach to actually creating a podcast. For years I've and people have been telling me, if you're just, oh, you need a podcast, you got to do a podcast. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it takes so much to go into making it and all that jazz. But connecting with you and you really making it simple and easy. Say, hey, actually, Madhu, you only have to do really this, this, that, the other. And then honestly, I'm happy to do the rest. And I didn't even realize how accessible it was. And I mean that so sincerely that not to flatter you in any way, but just from genuine gratitude that you've made this process so streamlined, easy, and simple to start my own podcast. And what speak of growing, I can't wait the next time I'm on to, you know, this is how we got our first 50,000 listeners, whatever the case might be, because of how well you've put things together. And so uh, the combination of those two, just wanting to become a great learner before doing it myself. And and then number two is you making it really easy to actually get started. Uh, That's what's made the coming weeks as we start to launch uh, so accessible and so timely. Man, of course, I appreciate that like crazy. And and I feel like it's honestly, you know, like you're the perfect person to to be starting a show and you're in the, the perfect spot. So yeah, this was like our, the way that we've set it up is exactly for for you. Like literally you were the person that we, that we built it for. And so it's so cool to see, to see you going through it. And Honestly, I, I do want to have you back on a couple couple months after you've launched and just see how things are going. And that's probably a really cool like, you know, growth curve to see, you know, because who knows what what we can even expect with with launching and, and what that's going to be like and what the first little bit is. But definitely we're going to learn a lot. And and for me, you know, like I have only been part of one podcast that ended up being super, super successful. Obviously, like right now we're launching tons of shows, but not only, you know, can your own personal story of what you've done be used to help other people, but what we do together on your podcast, even though it's not my personal podcast, is another way to go about having your own experience, even if it's not, you know, 
it's not I'm not growing the Justin podcast, but I but what we, whatever we do with yours is going to teach me so much about about podcasting as well. So I'm excited for that too. So so yeah, man. I mean, I I think that's that's everything. You're a wealth of knowledge in a, in a lot of ways, but it was cool to hear you know specifically about podcasting. Where do you want people to find you if you want to be found? Now is the time to 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 plug something. As always, I, I give all of our stuff for free, and uh, that's everything from holistic health and wellness to mindset to growing your business from a conscious perspective and actually scaling that. I be God, we've got so much too much content practically at this point. And the best way for anyone to reach me is on any platform at madhu.life, madhu.life, madhu.life. If you find me on any platform, that's our website as well. And if you send us the message, but here's just where I personalize it. You have to send me the message, Podigy, in which case that I know you're coming from here. So that not only will it, we give you access to all of our content and our course. And I mean, to be fully transparent, you know, these are courses that have helped people rebuild their health, help them make tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, really great content there that we'd like to just share with. Not only will I give you access to that, but I always come up with fun additional things for each, for people I really like. And I happen to really like you, Mr. Justin. And so what I will do is give a little breakdown, a podcasting breakdown that what's worked well for us as we're uh, building our own. So not only will you get access to our course, but also give you a little extra goodie there as well, a little extra treat. So madu.life, M-A-D-H-U dot L-I-F-E. And uh, from there, drop me the note, Podigy, and I'll get you all the information. And let's, you know, for me, it's just start a conversation. Let me know I can serve you. I can just make your life a little bit easier Then not only will I be happy, my teachers will be happy and you'll be happy. Everyone will be happy. It's great. I love it, man. I love it. I appreciate you doing that for the audience and hope people head over and do that. There's, I mean, I'm in there. I'm, I'm, I'm learning stuff. I'm growing my business. I'm Grow my podcast, all that stuff. And yeah, it's all free. So yeah, that's everything, man. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Super grateful to be here with you. And uh, I can't wait for more and more conversations like this. Same, man. Hey, just before you go, I'm really happy that you made it to the end of this episode. It means the world to me. I only want to ask for one thing in return for putting together all this content for free. And that's just leaving a review. If you can, wherever you're listening, if it's Apple or Spotify, just leaving a quick review is super, super helpful for us. It's going to help more people find the show so I can keep putting this content together for free. Thank you so much. And we will see you on the next episode of Oh My Pod.